everybody welcome to the Hamakua homestead my name is Tiffany and today we are going to be making a tomato meat sauce its intention is mostly for quick and easy out of the jar onto some noodles or you could even put on a pizza kind of a universal type of sauce it is not approved as far as I can gather uh, try to research it I don't have tomatoes growing right now well, very few of them. Um, so we got some tomato puree and we got crushed tomatoes from Costco. As far as anything that I can find, as far as the research goes for recanning canned tomatoes or anything else for that matter, um, is there's no guarantee of the acidity level it needs to be a high enough acidity in order to preserve properly. I am going to get these going onto a simmer with a few of our spices and things. Then I have to run to town, so I'm going to pick up some store-bought lemon juice, and that should help with the acidity level. I'm also not going to be adding um, really much of any low-acid foods to add to the possibility of the low acid issue. So I'm thinking it's gonna be all right. But again, this is not an approved recipe. To our tomato sauce, I'm adding serrano peppers. I added three bell peppers that were cut into about half inch or so, maybe a little bigger pieces. Fresh oregano. This much onion powder. That really wasn't very much at all. <laughs> so well. Black pepper. And garlic. Okay, now the clock is telling me that I have to run to town now. So I'm gonna leave this to go ahead and simmer a little bit and let all of those flavors kind of incorporate into each other. And while I'm in town, I'll grab the rest of our ingredients. Just got home from town. Oh, this smells so good in here. Woo. 
Got it on the lowest of the low. While I was gone, my sweetheart was keeping an eye on it and stirring for me. Oh, it smells amazing. Okay. I gotta unload the car. Okay, so the day ended up being a lot longer than I was anticipating. So I'm gonna go ahead and skip the browning of the ground beef and putting the ground beef in there for a meat sauce like I was originally intending. I'm just going to go ahead and jar this up the way that it is and I'm going to go ahead and add some lemon juice to it of course for the acidity just to be safe and we're just going to call it good for this batch. Maybe I'll try this again next weekend. Bye. So I do have a lemon tree and a lime tree right up in my backyard by the chicken coop. But in one of the videos I was watching, they instructed to use store-bought instead of fresh lemon juice. I did not get a chance to research why. So I'm just trusting the lady that I was watching. So we actually ended up with almost, almost nine quart jars. They're still hot, so I'm gonna go ahead and get their rims all cleaned up. I'm gonna use some white distilled vinegar, put their lids and rings on, get them into the canner. I've got that going and it is hot. So, it's hot, <laughs> I'm gonna put it down. Um, we've got our hot sauce, hot canner, hot jars, awesomeness. So. I'm gonna go ahead and whip them in because it's getting late. I have one lonely regular mouth jar for this project. All the other ones I'm using are wide mouth, but that's okay. It does not matter whatsoever. Only difference is it's gonna have a different brand lid just for because that's the way it happened. Now I am using white distilled vinegar to clean my rims. I know that most people say it is only really necessary when you are doing meat or things with oils or fats, but I generally just do it every time because it makes me feel better. I have seven quarts I'm putting into my Presto canner. 
I have one and almost two leftovers that I will just go ahead and stick in the fridge. And I'm sure that my sweetheart will absolutely adore to have that for lunch tomorrow. He works from home, so he is not always out and about. So I think he'll love it. These are not tight. They are like hardly nothing. Um, they need to be able to vent out the extra air. I'm at a one inch headspace, by the way. I did not mention that earlier. The sauce is at a one inch headspace. These jar lids are fingertip tight. That's all I'm doing. You don't wanna buckle them down. I'm wondering if that's why I've had a few fails in the past is I think that I have a tendency to try to tighten them a little bit more than they actually should. Um, but that's all, that's what we're supposed to do, I think. So I'm being extra careful this time about that particular thing. I'm gonna see if that makes a difference and hopefully I won't have any fails. Alrighty, so we have our seven quart jars in our Presto canner. I put in a little bit over three quarts of water in the bottom. It is hot, the jars were hot, the sauce was hot, so we don't risk any thermal shock. I'm gonna stick the lid on here and wait for it to steam out of its vent pipe for a full 10 minutes, and then I'm gonna start my timer. Do, 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 do. All right, you guys, I did it again. I don't know why I do that to myself. I know that my bedtime is early and it just got too late for me by the time the pressure canner came down. So it is the next day and we're gonna open up our canner. That's a big bummer. Two of these are not sealed properly and they gotta go in the fridge. Hmm. It does look like I have some air pockets maybe. like air pockets. It's not sealed. The other ones look good though. That's all right. They shall not go to waste. Uh, I didn't debubble these. I thought because it was so liquidy, maybe I wouldn't need to. Hmm. That's what I'm gonna blame it on. I didn't debubble. Interruption, sorry. Um, as I'm editing this video, I am realizing that I did not mention the fact that the night when I was putting this uh, pasta sauce, tomato sauce, um, on the pressure canner, I actually ended up putting it on the heat and going and chatting with some friends for a while, set a timer, came back. I was not keeping a proper eye on it. And when I came back, it was only at 14 pounds of pressure for the entire 30 minutes. That is not what it needed to be. It needed to be at least 15 pounds of pressure. Usually mine sits at 16 and I trusted it a little bit too much. It was not at the proper pressure. So what I ended up doing was coming back, realizing it was not up to pressure, then I 
brought the heat up a little bit, got it to the right pressure and reset my timer. I'm pretty certain that's why I had those failed, uh, those failed lids, but learning lesson. And that's what I'm here to do. Show you guys as I'm learning so that you can learn too. Always keep a close eye on your pressure canner. All right, well, anyways, we still have some delicious sauce and I definitely learned my lesson yet again that I need to start my canning processes and things earlier in the day. So that's all right. Thank you for hanging out with me today on the Hamakua Homestead. I look forward to seeing you again very soon.